Hello friends, hope you are well. I just had talks with some very special people and for me it really touched my heart. I've been praying for them without knowing them since 2014 and now it's 2000, almost 22, it's 21 December. And uh, I met some Uyghur people and uh, most of you would know uh, the situation they are going through and uh, for everyone it's dangerous to talk about so nobody's really talking aloud about it and they are suffering pretty much alone in the world and now they are even being sold by their brothers the nations where they have tried to have a uh, seek refuge um, in near the Middle East, let me not mention the names, uh, but they are not of my faith. They are of the faith of the majority of the Uyghurs. But their own brothers are selling them out now uh, so that the government where they have fled from can go and pick them up uh, in those countries inside the borders and bring them to the concentration camps. It's a terrible atrocity that's happening right before the eyes of the world. And yeah, now uh, the Uyghurs don't have friends from their religion, but they can rely on the true God who is truly merciful um, yeah, and try to seek uh, places where he has inspired the respect for human rights. So uh, being with them made me cry and uh, I still almost want to cry as I speak about it. It was very emotional, very special, and um, I, I just love that people. Their dances, their songs, their heart. Yeah, their, their heart. I know that we have good people in all, all cultures, in all nations. Yeah, we do. Good and bad people exist in all cultures and in all ethnicities and in all nations. I know that. But it was very special to meet with the, uh, the people and some of them told me their stories or just snippets of it. And uh, they've asked me to film and uh, to publish more of their stories. So we'll do that later. You should listen. You should look up and find out what's happening now. Uh, something that the world society, I think we never thought it would happen again. We never thought since the 1940s, 30s and 40s. I don't think the world society ever thought that we would see that happening again. But it is. So the Uyghurs need friends. They need a shoulder to cry on. They need people who understand. They need people who stand with them and uh, pray for them and receive them. So I encourage everyone everywhere to receive them in your homes, in your lives, in your heart. Make room for them in your heart. And uh, there is a story uh, that I've been thinking so much about these last days since I met this big group. And uh, I want to share it to encourage them, the Uyghurs who might be watching this video, and all of you who are going through very hard times and you feel betrayed and you feel just harassed. Okay, so it's two things. God says that even though the mountains disappear and the hills will be removed, my love for you will never fail, it will never finish, it will never be altered or changed, sorry. Uh, and uh, my pact of peace with you will never fail. 
says God who has compassion on you. He has compassion on you. He sees what is happening. He sees what you're going through and he has compassion on you. I hope you can feel it. And then in the next verse in Isaiah 54, this is Isaiah 54, 10 to 14. And then he says through the prophet, he says, um, O afflicted city, lashed by storms and not comforted by anyone. I will rebuild you. I will build you up again. And this time with precious stones. Everything in you will be made of precious stones and jewels. You will be stronger than before. You will be more beautiful th than before. Because God is the one who will build you. You know? And then he ends up saying that great will be the peace of your children. Your children will live in great peace. And terror and uh, fear will be far away from you. It will be removed for you. It will not come near you. So these are the promises of God. In the first place, it was given to his own people, uh, his example people, that experienced the same atrocities, the same terrible situation, the Jews, uh, as the Uyghurs are now facing. So it is we can take it to us and we can take it also to the Uyghurs. God has compassion on them. God has compassion on them. He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. I want to shout it. He has not forgotten you. You are not forgotten. So any Uyghurs who watch this, this is not the end. This is not the end. God has future and a hope for you. Just come. Just come close. Just be encouraged. Uh, by this God who has compassion on you. He is not a harsh God, uh, but he's one who actually hears your prayers and who comes down to the earth to help you. He comes down. He cares. You know, he cared so much for humanity that he actually came into the creation he created and uh, took all, our, all the curse that we got when we were kicked out of uh, Eden, uh, you know, <laughs> and he made a way back to Eden um, by opening uh, the gate to Eden again that was uh, shut by an angel with a, with a flaming sword going back and forth, keeping Adam and Eve out of Eden. Now, when God came into time and space himself, he opened, he tore, tore open uh, that gate into, back into Eden. Uh, when he died on the cross, when he gave his life free, freely, voluntarily. No one can kill God, uh, but he can give his life and take it back for us if he loves us enough, and he does. He loves you. He loves us. What an amazing, kind God. And we receive that just by faith, by trusting it, and we are guaranteed to go back to Eden uh, when our time comes. Well, the other story, uh, or, or the story that I wanted to, uh, to speak about just shortly, that I've been thinking about so much since the day I met uh, the Uyghur group, is the story of uh, Joseph. And it's in uh, the Torah. It's the first book of the Torah. So the Holy Bible has the Torah, the Sabor, the Prophets, the Injil. It has everything in it. So the Holy Bible, you can find everything. And everything that comes after that must align with the truths that are from the Torah, the Sabor, the Prophets, the Injil. Okay? And in the Holy Bible, you find everything. And you can find it in your language online. Just seek for the Holy Bible. And um, in the first book in the Holy Bible, Sorry. <laughs> uh, the, it's called Genesis, and that's where everything is explained how God created the world. It's explained about um, Abraham and his sons. When Abraham uh, was told to sacrifice his son on a mountain, and God said, I will provide myself a lamb instead, so that sacrificing that lamb, the lamb of God, Hamel Allah, then you will live, or the son of uh, Abraham will live. And that's what happened to us, that I just explained, right? Uh, 
So uh, in that same book, in chapter 39, you can read the story that I think is so similar to the story of the Uyghurs. And it ends well, it ends really well. So uh, it's a story about Joseph, in Spanish, Jose. And I don't know in Uyghur or in Arabic how, how it's called. Please help me if you have watched the video so far. Please write what is uh, the name in Arabic and in Uyghur of this character, this person who is called Joseph in English. Yusuf, I guess. In chapter 37 of uh, Genesis, the first book of the Holy Bible of the Torah, uh, there you see a man who had colorful clothes, uh, who was very talented and who was beloved by his father and who was kind of more talented than his brothers and uh, eccentric and colorful and beautiful and yeah, like everything that the Uyghurs are also. And uh, you can just watch them. Oh, sorry. Uh, their folk songs, their dancing, their clothes, their food. Yeah. So in the same way that they were, uh, he was colorful and, oh, sorry for this. Uh, in the same way, Joseph, Yosef was colorful and beautiful and, you know, uh, his brothers got jealous of him. And his own brothers put him in a well and try to kill him. But then they say, no, we will not completely kill him because the guilt will be on us. So they confined him, okay? They confined him, his brothers confined him in a well where he was languishing, he was suffering. And then came some caravans and then they said, let us sell him and get money. So he was sold to slavery by his own brothers, those who should protect him, they sold him for money. And off he went uh, to Egypt. And there he excelled because he was so hardworking, just like the Uyghurs. Hardworking man with a pure heart, good, a good person, like following God and with a pure heart. And then uh, he was accused falsely uh, in the house of Potiphar, that he had tried uh, to do something bad, but it was the wife of Potiphar who had actually tried to sleep with him, and he said no, because he respected God and respected his, his boss, you know? So he didn't want to do it. Then she complained, and she accused him. Uh, and then he had to go to prison, and in the prison even, he was helping others, and he was interpreting dreams because he had connection to God. La la la. Long story short, he was forgotten in prison and those who uh, promised to help him out didn't help him out and he was forgotten but not by God. So one day uh, the leader of the country, the pharaoh, he needed to have a dream interpreted and some uh, remembered that in the prison was rotting a man who could interpret dreams, Joseph, Yusuf. Uh, with his connection to God. And then they sent for him, and he saw and interpreted the dream of Pharaoh perfectly. And he said that there will be uh, seven good years now, and after that, seven bad years. So you have to store up food in the seven good years so that you will not die of starvation in the seven bad years. So the Pharaoh, the leader of the country, made him the second in command. After Pharaoh came this Uyghur, or came uh, the Jew, uh, Yusuf, uh, who was, uh, had been in prison and been hurt and been neglected and forgotten and never comforted, you know? Suddenly he was the second in command in all of Egypt, and he helped rule the country. And then uh, later, he, um, his brothers came back to him, and they were starving because... That's, that's what can happen when you don't uh, care for the needy. God says that uh, if you close your heart to the needy when they cry out for help, I will close my heart towards you. 
So it's dangerous for us to close our heart towards the poor and the needy and think only about our own Christmas, only about our own uh, houses, our own family, our own wealth, our own car, our own hitte. It's dangerous, you know? Uh, because if we close our hearts when they cry out, he will close his heart and not answer when we cry out. Sorry. Um, that's how much God loves those who are suffering and has put us on the earth to be his hands and feet, to reach out, to give gifts, to heal the sick, to go and raise up the dead, to raise hope, to give hope to clothe those who are naked, to give food to uh, those who are hungry, and to give housing to the tired wanderer. And you would not know how many are tired after oppression, after living in fear and experiencing the worst. So please take people in to your house, to your heart, to your life, and share what you have. God will remember you. God will remember you. Okay, but the story of Joseph ended well. He became uh, the ruler and was able then by his wisdom and his purity of heart to help all the nations around there. And uh, his family came to live in Gozen in the best part of the country. And uh, yeah. And uh, the other person who was also sold by someone who, uh, whom he loved and helped uh, was uh, Jesus, Isa. He was sold by one of his disciples whom he had fed, who, whom he had taught for three years, Judas Iscariot. He betrayed Jesus um, and sold him for money. But Jesus, it was part of the plan. And um, Jesus resurrected again and lives and will soon come back from heaven and be the judge of all the earth. Okay. And in the end of the story of Yusuf, he said to his brothers, You meant this for evil for me, but God meant it for good, so that I could help and save many people. So, uh, the, behind that, I'm not saying that God is behind it, but even though the, even the, worst things, the terrible things, God can turn them around as long as our hearts are fully with him, as long as we follow Jesus, he has promised that he will turn on our even the worst things. In Romans 8, 28, he says, uh, we know that God makes all things work together for good for those who love Yahweh. Jesus you know so if we do that if we love the creator God the word of God who created everything and he said be light if we love love him and follow him and trust him he will turn everything out for good even the pain even the sorrow and even the injustice because God is a God of justice and he is on the side of justice um, God is on the side of justice let us be also let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for sending some of my brothers and sisters here close to me that I could meet them. And I pray that you will bless them. And I pray for all the Uyghurs and all who are oppressed and afflicted in other nations all around the world. Please send protection around them. Be a wall of fire around them, Lord, and be the glory in their midst. Lord, give strength and comfort to their tired hearts. Heal their wounds, Lord, and raise them up to become all that you have planned for them to be. Make way for them, Lord. Open the doors for them into safety, out of prison, out of darkness, into your wonderful light. Let them experience your love, Lord. Let them experience your love, not just know about your love, but experience it. I pray your protection and your care and you holding them in your loving arms, Lord. I bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Take care of them, Lord. 
Amen.